really hard for artists to answer their qu a question like that about their own art because art comes from places that we don't have words for. That's why we do our art. Um, and that's typically what I will tell people. But if you want to, you know, elevator speech is I do photorealistic pencil and mylar drawings, very large, very detailed, and they take a really long time to do. They average between 300 and 400 hours on average. So, you know, in a year I can probably do three. If I'm really working hard, I could do four. These drawings are big. They're roughly 54 by 60 on average. I've always, I think I've always been making stuff. Uh, I started drawing and, and painting when I was a kid because I couldn't believe the piano. My mom gave me piano lessons and the piano teacher pulled my mom aside at one point. She said, have any other side things? And, and she said, well, why? Because she said, well, he's not a very good piano player. <laughs> so I got involved in art. So uh, all through my life I've done art, but I, uh, for about a 30 year period after college, I didn't do any. I went into advertising and marketing and it wasn't until 30 years of doing that that I recognized that I need to do something else and something that's more uh, compelling for myself. When I normally do, I know exactly what I, the pieces I want the piece to look like before I even start it. And there's, there's a, a creative flexibility in some of that. Oh, I started with sculpture. I mean, I've, I've always built stuff. I was always making crazy contraptions in high school and uh, sculptural pieces and. I like building things because you can basically, at the end of the day, you can see what you did. It wasn't until my, my thesis year in grad school, I went to grad school way late. Like I was uh, 55 when I decided to go back to grad school. They were real cool about if you wanted to switch mediums. And so we had a lot of painters become 3D people and 3D people become, become painters or in my case, drawing. In fact, most of my instructors said, why do you want to draw? That's all preliminary to doing something else. And I thought, Maybe, but maybe, and fortunately, the trend has swung to drawing as being more uh, recognized. Like with any, I think, good piece of art, it has a narration or a backstory behind it that is just not, in this case, a, a saddle. It's a Western saddle. Well, what's the big deal about that? Well, every Western saddle is really a functional piece of art that a number of craftsmen have created. They're ridden or they're in shows and then they go away. And I thought they're, I think they're just beautiful pieces of art just in themselves, but not everybody can have a saddle in the middle of the living room. I think there's some art that needs to be fun. Why there's a bingo card, why there's just squishy paint on it. Actually, there's several pieces of memorabilia in a little hidden compartment that supports the bingo card. And so if you take the piece off the wall and you rattle it around, you can tell there's something in there. But in order to get, if you wanted to get that out, you'd have to destroy the piece. So, and along with the Western saddles, which I look at as, this is my day job. I like to go to recess and I like to play. And so while I'm creating these pieces, I'm conjuring up the different types of works that are, some are multimedia pieces, some are video, some are sculptural. And Cufflink has allowed me to take and exhibit uh, quite a few of those. Some I had before I actually started showing with them and some that I've created most recently. But if you would look at a, a show, it could be the complete, it's basically completely filled with my work, and you would never know that it was from the same artist because they're completely different disciplines. And this was kind of cool. I have a lot of pieces of art that haven't, haven't matured into art yet. They're basically piles of barbed wire and you know extra pieces of cut off cedar that it's someday I go, oh, I can do that, do this, boop, 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 and, and it becomes a, a sculptural piece that has just been living in different parts. It just hasn't taken and uh, manifested into a, a final piece. Hmm. Well, I have a, uh, you can't see it now, I have a tattoo on my chest. The tattoo is the word persevere, but it's written in mirror script. And so every morning when I get up and I'm brushing my teeth or something like that, I read this sort of mantra, persevere, do the work, you know, don't think that you're going to be uh, a master and, you know, take a master class and you're automatically going to be shown in uh, at the Tate Museum. Uh, it takes a lot of work, uh, but don't do it because you want to sell work or make a living at it. Do it because it compels you. you. You have to do it. You cannot not do it. If you have that magic ingredient, then you're most likely to take and be successful, even just personally, just from a reward standpoint. 
I've been fortunate that some people have, have liked some of my work and uh, I've got a lot in storage that I don't know if it will ever go anywhere, but I, I do it because I really love to do it. And that's, that's the advice I can give. It's not the materials you work with or the education that you have. It's the uh, initiative to do it anyway.